Welcome to Utah's Fly Corner. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a flimp I use for Hendrickson hatches. Uh, in this one I'm going to tie the uh, uh, light Hendrickson version. Um, you're going to need a tan thread. I like the Uni 8 Um For the dubbing you're going to need some Australian possum. Good stuff. Uh, for the hackle I'm going to be using a honey done hackle, which is a, it's a lighter shade of honey done. Uh, matches the naturals uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, the hook I have here in the vise is a Daiichi Allen Jackson soft hackle hook. These are good in size uh, 9's and 11's for this hatch. So I'm going to start my thread, run it back, make sure you have a nice long tag. You're going to need it. Run it back to about the point. Save your tag end. Don't get rid of it. Now I'm going to tie in the tail, which is bronze mallard flank. Only one about six to eight fibers. You can line the tails up if you wish. Or tie them on all crooked. It doesn't really matter. The fish don't care. But full length of the body. Tie them in on top. I hold them on top. I pinch the thread in between my finger and thumb. I bring it on down on top and do it one more time. Make sure they're sitting on top. And there you are. Go one more time to hold all that down. Now, you're also going to need pink floss. I like this uh, Danville. Um, four strand because you just use a single strand. It's a bubblegum pink color. They call it just pink, but it's a nice uh, light shade of pink. Uh, with floss, before you wind it on, just run it through your lips and get it wet. This piece is too long. And just catch that in on the top. Make sure you catch it in back where your tail starts. And then just run your thread up, tying everybody in. You could trim the trim the butts to length of the body, but I'll show you a neat trick to uh, bulk up the body. Let's fold these tips back and wind over them about a quarter of the way back on the body. And then bring your scissors in just like that, snip them off. That's going to do. Bring your thread over it and back up. That does, it gives you a quick little taper to your fly. And you want to take your floss. Now, this pink floss is going to get wet when you fish the fly. And what that's going to do then is it's going to show through with the tan. And it's just going to leave a, a pink haze on the fly, so to say. It uh, makes the fly look much like the naturals. Bring the floss up. Catch it in. Too on and too off is just plenty to tie off floss. You don't need to get too crazy because we're going to rib it. Now with the ribbing, what we're going to do is we're going to dub onto the ribbing. Okay, so now lift your tag end up. You're going to want to take some dubbing wax. Um, I'm using Wopsy's uh, premium dubbing wax here uh, because it's a blonde. So it's not going to show up. But just run that up the thread a little ways here. Then you just want to take your dubbing. This is the Australian possum. You just want a little bit. You can see there's hardly anything in my hand. And just dub a little bit onto that thread there.
Don't want anything crazy. Keep this very sparse to the point where it just looks like some hairy thread. That's what you really want. Okay, so now you got your thread dug. You want to come in, sneak it underneath your tail first. Hold your tail in place. And then bring it up and over. And then I like to use my vise. I hold my thread over my finger like that so that it stays out of the way. It acts like a bobbin thread holder. And then I just rib my f wind, spin my vise, and wind that dubbing on right around. Hold that rib tight. That's where an auto bobbin comes in handy. See now I had to uh, run the thread back up to get it caught back up. Now you can see it, uh, make it out in the camera pretty good. Um, it has more of a tan tone to it at the moment. When it gets wet, like I said, it's going to have a more uh, tan tone or a pink hue to it. I'm going to take just a little more dubbing, build up a little bit of a thorax area. Just dub a little bit on there. Sweep the dubbing back so it's not in the way. If it's a little too hairy, you think, you can always snip some off, but <coughs> the fish aren't going to mind. And then take your hackle. Now, before you even start tying these, size out the hackles before you even, you know, venture down this road. Or get to tie one fly and get to this part, and then size a bunch of them, and you can um, then just pick them off the skin and have them ready to go. But what I do is I just bend it back, take a look, hold the hackle stem where I'm going to be winding it, and look at where the fibers go. Back to the back start of the bend, which is what I want. So now with this one, it's a relatively long hackle, so I'm going to tie it in by the butt. Snip that wet, ultra webby part off. Strip off some of the fibers. Snip it to the length I need it to be to tie it in. Just catch it on the top there. Make sure it's tied in tight. Now to wind this hackle on, holding it, this front side of the hackle is here where my forefinger is. All I'm doing is pulling the hackle fibers back and up, getting them to stand the way I'm going to want them to lay. Now I just wind around as I'm coming around. I just keep folding them back. As I come on this side, I let go, fold again this way. I'm holding on to it with my left hand. I come up, as I come up, I fold them. As I come around, do the same. Just keep repeating until you get up towards the front, to where your thread is. Oh, let go of it. That happens sometimes. But. Like I said, just wind it on, fold it back, fold it back as you're winding around. And then catch it with your thread, and tie it off. Now to make a neat head on a wet fly, this is the easiest trick in the book. Just take everybody back at this point. Don't go chopping anybody. And wind right from that hook eye right on up to where your last wrap of hackle was. Then hold your thread nice and tight and break that hackle stem off. You'll end up with a pretty nice head right off the bat. And I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. I whip finish by hand. To do this, 
you take two fingers, put them over the thread, you wind the thread around around your fingers, and you form a loop like this. Now this line here coming out of the bobbin, I'm just holding on the side of the head and I'm just wrapping the thread in my hand over it. And as I come around I have to rotate my hand as I wrap. And you just tighten it up. And I caught a little bit of hair in there. Snip him out of there. And you can fix your hackle. When you sweep hackle back like that, it gets a little uh, matted to one side of the fly or the other. Just brush it out like that and then brush it on back. Back into place. You know, one that I don't like. Usually just pinch them and snip them off. Uh, rip them off if uh, you don't like, like them, but you could have hackles point every which way on the fly and the, the fish will still hit it. They like them. And then I put a little bit of head cement on the fly, and then just coat it all the way around. But that's the uh, that's my light March Brown uh, flimp. The beauty of this fly is you can fish it all throughout the hatch. You can fish it before the bugs start hatching, dump it down on the bottom, and just uh, let it. Let it come up to the top at the end of your drift and uh, wiggle the rod. Fish will hammer it. Put it right in the film when the flies are emerging. Put a little floating on the fly or just put it on your leader. Grease your leader and throw it out there. Let it drift in the film and the fish will, fish will pound them. You can even throw this fly during the spinner fall and the fish will hit it. Well, that's my light Hendrickson. Now to do the dark Hendrickson, all you gotta do is just change the thread. Use the same materials, the pink pink floss and the hackle and the tail are all the same. But I like to use this rusty brown um Danville thread and the non wax is good stuff. Um it really uh really let that uh dubbing wax and your head cement dig into it. Um and it works really nice. But uh when this gets uh when you tie it with this it'll once the once the body of the fly gets wet, it'll um it'll end up uh pretty dark. And uh, it's actually uh for the Hendricksons around me, uh in my area here in the northeast, I'm from uh New Jersey. Um and the, I fish Pennsylvania, New York and New Jersey. And the Hendricksons can vary um from stream to stream very much. So I advise you not to just go ahead and tie uh, my exact colorings in this. Um, you can and give them a shot. I'm sure they'll still catch your fish. So I recommend that you go to your streams that you fish, your local streams during this hatch, um, and catch some of these bugs and take a good look at them. Um, get in the water there with a net and so forth and try and catch some of the nymphs, catch some of the emergers as they're emerging in the film. Um, it's it's a it'll be a tough thing to do for you to do, but it, believe me, it'll, it'll pay off in uh, many trout caught. Uh, if you are on stream and you see them bugs start hatching and the fish are rising, to get out there and catch yourself some of the bugs that they're catching and take a good look at them and come home to your vise with your materials and tie up some of the flies to represent them but as far as colors go the Hendricksons can vary very much from stream to stream so I highly recommend doing that for the Hendricksons well, it's my Hendrickson flimp that I like to use and I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out on my site, www.utahsflycorner.com. Thanks for watching.